and we're going to be doing some crazy house puzzles. Um, and we're going to start with some puzzles from uh, the, uh, the Crazy House 10 plus 10 League, the first ever such league, uh, which was a spin off from the Lee Chess 45 45 League. So if you sign up for the Lee Chess 45 45 League or Lone Wolf, um, then you are also allowed to join uh, this. Um, uh, this 10 plus 10 league organized by ZHER0. Uh, so 15 players participated in the first ever league. Um, and uh, myself and Fishy Vishy were tied on six out of seven uh, points at the ends of that league. And uh, what I'm showing you here actually is um, a blog which has some puzzles within it from this league. Um, and this blog is called zhchess.blogspot.com, so it's great for Crazy House. Um, but what I've uh, done is I've I put these puzzles in a, a Lee Chess study, and uh, we're going to start with these, and then we're going to progressively work to more difficult puzzles. We might also look at some puzzles from the Crazy House World Championship, which is ongoing. And for those of you following um, my Twitch and my YouTube, you'll know that there are lots of commentary videos up on my YouTube of the Crazy House World Championship. So let's get to it. Let's start trying to solve some puzzles. Okay, so we're black here. Um, this is a common motif, the pawn on f3 or h3, uh, threatening to take g2, and that's depriving the king of the h1 square. Um, so for sure we know the first move is going to be knight to e2, king to one side, and pawn takes pawn, and th that's going to draw the king out. Um, now I should say, to begin with, often in, uh, in chess you say you shouldn't, shouldn't really play a move until you can see all the way through to mate. Um, but that's not the case in Crazy House, because if there's a check uh, and you're laying a piece on, you know that's going to improve your position. So I haven't even actually... and also time is much shorter in Crazy House than in uh, normal chess. So just by elimination I know these two have to be the first two moves, and I don't need to calculate. Um, and the, both those moves improve my position, even if they weren't mating. Uh, and only now I can calculate and see, well, look, the knight uh, actually um, guards the dark squares, and the bishop guards the light square. So I just need to cover this square and this square. And this is actually quite simple. It's a simple bishop here. It's checkmate. So we're starting off quite easy, um, and we're going to progressively get more difficult. And hopefully this will be quite a good introduction to get better at Crazy House. Um, and there's a little bit of a hint because it does actually tell you how many moves. Um, okay, but uh, this one, so we're white um, and we have a knight and a queen. Hmm. So if I, so I've, if I played knight here, he'd just take the bishop. If I played knight here, he'd also take the bishop, but that would leave this square open for my queen. So knight here wouldn't actually work, because you take the bishop, I might have to swing my knight out, but the g7 square is guarded. But if I go knight to here, so you've got to be careful, there are two possible checks, one of them doesn't work, then I can put my queen here. The queen covers the dark squares, and knight will cover the light square. So that's that one. Okay, puzzle three. Okay, so now this is actually a very classic uh, uh, crazy house um, puzzle, because we have here two knights, a queen, and diagonal pieces. Uh, and we have here a castled king. So this is a really, really classic puzzle. Um, the way of opening up this king is with a knight at h3. Um, now the reason for that is because if, the, if, if um, white doesn't take the knight, if the king slides to the corner, you can drop a queen on g1, rook takes queen, and knight takes f2 as a smothered mate. And we have the knight and the queen, and so and this this will always work unless the g1 square is covered. For example, if white has a knight on f3 covering g1, then when you play queen at g1, the knight could take that. Or if the f2 square is covered, say a bishop is on g3, that's another good way of defending against this idea. Um, so I know that if I play this move, knight here, he has to take it, because these two squares are both not covered. If he didn't take it, king goes to corner, queen here, rook to cross, that knight still alive would go knight takes f2, smothered mate. So this is a really classic crazy house idea. Okay, but now we have a second knight. 
And uh, just like we saw in the first puzzle, that second knight can be used to hit g1, but also hit g3. Um, we could, now, often in Crazy House puzzles you put the knight here, and the idea is to swing it out here and then land a queen on g2, and that will be checkmate. So this will also work, and I think in, this is actually from one of my own games, and this is what I did. Uh, so when you do put the knight here, the, if the king came up, knight here, and then the king would come up again maybe, and uh, maybe queen here or queen here, and the king is, is being pushed forward with not very many squares to go to. Um, uh, the king would, so for example, if, if the queen were to go here, you go king takes knight, but then you could just got, drop a pawn here and a pawn here, for example, and that would be checkmate. Um, but here there's something even nicer, which is knight here, because just like we saw in the very first puzzle, that covers both the dark squares. So now if we just put a pawn here, he's forced to take that pawn, and we don't actually even need the queen. Even a bishop will do to checkmate. So this is quite nice. So normally you need uh, the two... I, I, let's just show the, the other mate, which is also sometimes used. Um, so we're going back right to the beginning again. Um, knight here, because you're threatening a smothered mate. If the king goes to one side, queen at g1, just in case people are still joining us. If king goes here, queen at g1, rook takes queen, and knight takes f2 would be smothered mate. Uh, now I've shown you this, the quick mate, with knight here, pawn here, and then bishop here, checkmate. But there's also this mate, pawn here, king takes pawn. This is, you almost always do, knight here. If the king goes back, queen at g2 will be checkmate. So the king was forced to come forward. Um, now in this situation, we've got queen here, check. But the king could then run this way. And then we might go king here check and the king would run here. So this will be mating, but we might want to be careful to find the most accurate mate. Uh, in, in this situation it's very easy because the bishop is guarding the square, so we could even go queen here, king takes knight, queen takes pawn, king here, queen here is checkmate, defended by the bishop, because the king has just run into these pawns and can't advance any further. Um, suppose we didn't use the fact this bishop was there, what else could we do? Um, okay, I'll show you something else we could do. We, oh no, you have to be careful because this bishop is actually guarding the, the dark squares. So I was thinking of putting a queen here and then going, um, and then dropping a pawn here, and then king takes pawn, pawn here, king goes back, pawn here, checkmate. But that actually doesn't work because the bishop is guarding these dark squares. Um, but in any case, I, I'm just going to just, just do this mate. Here, check. Here, defended by the bishop, and here, checkmate. Um, but as I said, there, there was a much neater mate, which I'll just show just once more, because it really is very nice. It wasn't the one I played in the game, which is just simply here, check, pawn here, that covers the dark squares, and bishop here, checkmate. Now, it's really good to recognize these patterns, because they'll really help you improve your crazy house. Um, okay. So chapter uh, puzzle four. Um, so now we've got a pawn, two knights, and a bishop. So notice if we had a rook in hand, then we could do the same little trick of, well, we can't because the queen was guarding it. But we would have that idea. Um, OK, so this looks like a more complicated puzzle. Uh, and I have the idea, maybe a knight here followed by a bishop takes pawn might um, might be worth something. Let's let's see. Knight here, and we have to be wary because the queen does cover all these light squares. So knight here, king could go here. Bishop takes pawn, king takes. So let's just try and imagine that for a second. We could use our second knight here, and then if the king were to go back, pawn here would be checkmate. So the king would have to run forward to either here or here. But remember, there's a knight here, so the king can't run to there. It must run to here. So we've got a knight here and a knight here, and the king is running to here. Uh, at this point we could put a bishop on g2, and the king would run even further. And then, then, then there's a war, because the knight covers this square, and the bishop would cover these two squares. So the king could never run back. Uh, and at that point I think we could just drop a pawn here, force it forward, and then these two pawns. So I think that will just work. 
Let's go check. Fish takes pawn. Right here, check. And hopefully, uh, with these play against computer studies, it's quite nice because it tells you that the mate. So if you if you do something which is not as fast as the shortest mate, then then uh, you've got a. Let's put a new pawn. Um, okay, and then this is hopefully checkmate. Yes, excellent. Okay, good. Uh, next one. So this, so we're seeing a lot of these sort of knight and bishop kind of attacks via g2. So this is one where I was on the receiving end of this from Fishy Vishy. Now, without even calculating, I know what the first few moves are going to be. And like I said, in normal chess, in regular chess, you should probably calculate to the end of the line. Um, but the thing in Crazy House is you don't need to calculate to the end of the line because you know that every time you're adding one of the pieces in hand onto the board, you're improving your position. Um, and Okay, so we want to get... Now at this point I have to think a second, because there are a few things I could do. I could go knight takes bishop. I think I want to do that. Um, it feels like it clears clears the air a bit. So I'm just going to do knight takes bishop. Okay, it does like it. And now I'm thinking of going pawn here. Um, or bishop. Do I do a bishop here? So I've got two pawns and a bishop. Um, so I could go pawn here. If he steps back, he's getting mated. If he steps here, so maybe I'll go bishop here. Because if I go bishop here, then if he steps here, that's definitely mate. So bishop here forces him to take. So it's very forcing. Then I could drop a queen here, and that forces him to step up. Um, Then I could go, yeah, so I'm not, let's see. Uh, maybe I'll just go pawn here. So pawn here, king here, queen here, king here. So the reason I'm thinking of a pawn is because then maybe I could put a queen here, and if he steps here, I can put a bishop here. And then that feels more forcing. But if I put a pawn, he doesn't have to take it. He could go here straight away. Oh, but then I've got a bishop here, and he has to step forward here, and queen here, and then he's trapped. So um, a pawn it is. He takes it. Good. Then I'm going to do a queen. That's going to stop him running running back. And then I'm going to do a bishop, and the, the queen is cutting off the dark squares. And finally I'm going to put a pawn with the knight also cutting off the dark squares. Phew! Checkmate. Uh, okay, next one. Um, so this game, this one, we only have a pawn and a bishop in hand, which doesn't look like that much. Ah, but we have knight takes pawn check, and that will open up the queen. So knight takes pawn check, uh, he has to go here or here. Uh, then notice how this knight again is going to be covering a lot of the dark squares. If he were to go here, we could simply go queen here, check, and take anything in the way. But if he were to go here, we could put a bishop, check, and then that forces so the king. Oh, I have a better idea. Knight takes pawn, check, king here. Then queen here check, and that forces him. Ah, oh, that's mate. Huh, that's mate. Because the knight, yeah, so if you were to go uh, go up, queen here would be checkmate, because it, it cuts the king off, and the knight co covers the last square. Whereas this one, I can just move my king all the way in, oops, and take, take the blocker. That was weird how it was the wrong color. Okay, next one. Um, so we've got a pawn, a knight, and a bishop in hand. 
and uh, we have a nice pawn here, but it's hanging. Um, so we'll always we have to be on the lookout for forks, and so that's a, a very nice idea, but somehow it may not be forcing enough. You have to be a little bit careful. And then the other thing is looking at the squares for the king. So this pawn is a wonderful piece because it really cuts off the king. So, so one idea could be knight here check. Um, and if the king were to step back, pawn here is checkmate. So knight here check forces king takes pawn. And then we could lay a bishop here check. So the king would have to end up going here. Uh, or we could just go pawn there check, and the bishop the king would go here. And then we could have put a bishop check. Now the bishop would cover the dark squares, the knight would cover the light squares, so the king would have to come back here, and a pawn is checkmating. So this is a nice simple mate. Pawn. Oh, I hadn't thought things through. Yeah. See, originally I thought bishop, so I, I made. So the problem is the king runs away uh, in this if you put a pawn. Uh, I had not thought things through. That's not good at all. I need a bishop here just to, to stop the king from running back. Um, so have I done something wrong? Ah, so bishop is not good. Um, okay, so so bishop apparently is mating, but it's not easy. Okay, so this so I got this completely wrong. Um, so there are other things I could do. I could go queen takes knight and drop. Yeah, but no, I do want a bishop. Hmm. Okay, so when I when I do drop a bishop here, he's going to be forced back to here. Then I can drop a pawn here, and he's forced back to here. But then he, he's running away. I wanted a bishop. Oh, maybe rook takes bishop. Rook takes bishop. That way I have the bishop later. Um. So probably lots of things are mating here, but hi there, Antic ZH, also Antic on Leeches. Um, yeah, so I'm doing some crazy house puzzles, um, and I just got the first one wrong <laughs> um, because I accidentally put a pawn here. And just when I was because I wanted I wanted to put a bishop here, but then the king runs back, and then I wanted to put another bishop here. Uh, and then the king runs here, and then a pawn to finish off the job. Because I want to avoid the king running this way, and I want to avoid the king running this way as well. Um, so if I want a second bishop, I could just go and get it with rook takes bishop. But that's a very bad idea, because then the queen comes in and, and protects everyone. Um, so I'm just thinking for a second. Uh, queen takes knight is possible, then... Bishop here, king here. But somehow that pawn here, king goes back here, and it's, it's not so obvious how we're going to mate. Um, oh, we just move our existing bishop. How silly of me. Yes, okay. So that's a, re that's a really important lesson. Using the resources we have on the board. Um, and that's just perfect. The knight covers the light squares, and the, the dark squares checkmate. So just running from the beginning again. It was knight here, check forcing him to take because if he steps if he steps back pawn here is checkmate and then moving our existing bishop to checkmate and uh, so we're just doing these com computer studies and I just just to show like past studies each time we do them it clears them again so we can we can do them again from scratch and we don't have all the notation telling us the answer so it's a quite quite a nice resource Yep, I already have a second bishop, as Antic says, yes. Um, yeah, so we're starting with some quite easier puzzles, and then we're going to be, mo uh, which we're taking from um, the 10 plus 10 league, uh, which is a spin off of the 45 45 league. So if you're interested, um, con uh, contact ZHER0 on Lee Chess. Uh, and then we'll move on to some Crazy House World Championship um, highlights, uh, which are a little bit more complicated because usually it's the, the higher quality players in the World Championship. So maybe some more complex puzzles, although we'll see some of these are complex as well. So this one, um, we have nothing in hand. 
Um, so we really need to we really need to stop this king running away. We could go queen takes bishop, knight takes, and bishop drop here. That stops him running away, but he still has this square to run to. But that's fine because then we can move the knight in here. It's checkmate. So queen takes bishop. If you don't take it, uh, the queen will just come in straight in and checkmate you. So uh, that's what's happening here. So a much more interesting variation, which the computer missed, uh, was if I close that down. Uh, knight. I think it should be possible. Hmm. So it seems I can't move the, because it's a computer study. I it seems I can't. Um, it seems I can't actually make moves, which is unfortunate. Um, but I can make moves. Good. So in this situation, it just bishop here king here and knight here is also checkmate. So I think that was a more aesthetic checkmate. But Okay, next. Chapter Puzzle 9. Uh, so we're black to move. Hi there, PJKEOGH. Uh, he says, I check these out there in my favorites. Cool. Um, so I'm just reviewing these again and then I've, I've actually created five more of these studies just today. So and I can post up all the links um, uh, as we go along, um, or I mean the yeah I'm going or I'm going, I'm going to also put this on YouTube and I'll put all the links and also you can find the links I'll, I'll post the links to the blogspot which is zhchess.blogspot.com I'll put all the links down to these studies. Uh, so here, this is, just seems to be another easy one with we have two knights and a queen. So this seems to be uh, another easy, uh, well, so we could do what we saw in the earlier example, a knight here, you're forced to take it, and a knight here. But I just noticed there's a very easy way of doing it. Just simply put a knight here, because we already have a knight hitting f2, and so this is a nice short mate. So this was actually a really easy one. Uh, a nice smothered, smothered mate. Okay, um, puzzle 10. So we have a pawn and bishop in hand. Um, so what occurs to me immediately is we could put a bishop here, push the king to the back rank, and then take a rook. Um, and if we if we had a pawn and a rook, that would be mate. Okay, so that would that would definitely be mate. But is there something even quicker? Yeah, because bishop here, king would have to go here, and then queen here is just checkmate immediately. So this is really a very easy puzzle. So I have to, to apologise for the. For the more advanced players in the audience, I promise these are going to get tougher as we get as we get further on. Uh, but that really was an easy one. Um, so this one, so check, and the idea is if the king had run this way, then knight here check, king goes back, and pawn here checkmate. Because it's going this way, I can push it even further, um, and I can go like this. And I think I can go queen takes knight. But if I go queen takes knight, he comes back. So I need to work out. So I don't want to go queen takes knight. What I want to do is this, because that's checkmate immediately. Yes. OK. Uh, next one. So we have a knight, a bishop, and a queen. And what I notice straight away is that this g7 square is unprotected. So this could be an entry square for an attack. Um, and in fact, it is an entry square for an attack. So we just drop a bishop here, uh, drop a, a knight here. This pawn is protected by that knight, so he's forced to come up. Um, now we could now put a queen here, and then he's forced to come like so. And pawn here is checkmate, I believe. Because the knights guard everything else. So that was, yep, yeah, mate in four. Uh, next one. Uh, white to mate. So we have a two bishops, a rook, and a queen. Okay, again, this is quite. Uh, we, this is clearly going to be mating because we're just going to jump a queen here. And this is clearly going. To, it's not going to take very much to mate, but okay. Um, we can't put a queen here because the bishop's guarding d6. Be a little bit careful. Uh, but we have rook takes pawn. He might block. 
and then we have queen d6, and then he might go back, and then we have um, rook here checkmate. Yeah. So rook takes one. Notice d6 is a problem, but we can create some sort of interference. So mate in seven. Wow. So, so this. Okay. So I think I want to do this as my next move. So the point is you can't take it because the queen is pinned. Uh, now I wanted to... I was, I was imagining he was going to go the other way and I was going to put a rook here and rook takes rook checkmate but he's not making it so straightforward for me. He's going to just try and make it a little bit more complicated. Um, so let's see. I could go rook takes queen, but then bishop takes and the king is running. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if this is right, but I think what I want to do is bishop here to take this one. Because if the queen takes the bishop, queen takes queen is checkmate. And if the king uh, moves to d8, then uh, bishop takes pawn defending the rook is surely mating but the point is he has two options king takes rook or queen takes so queen takes bishop doesn't work so it'll be king takes rook but the advantage of that is then i can go bishop takes pawn and if he goes back then again he's getting mated so he's going to go queen takes queen take queen king takes so the king will end up on here no it doesn't quite work let's see bishop here king takes rook bishop takes pawn queen takes bishop Queen takes queen, king takes queen. Still d6 is protected. So this, this, so maybe I'll think of something else. What I'm thinking next is what about rook takes bishop? Um, hmm. And then the other thing I'm thinking of is queen takes rook, obviously. But what about rook takes bishop? Because that bishop's kind of annoying. Um, so if rook takes bishop, obviously... He'll probably go king takes. Hmm, maybe that doesn't quite work. So let's go bishop here, king takes rook. Bishop takes pawn. No, maybe not bishop takes pawn. Actually, this is crazy because I've got two bishops in hand. So I can, I can just, this is very, okay. I can just win the queen. So this should be fine. I mean, oh, I just thought I was going to win the queen. It's going to be easy. But apparently that's not the right move. Oh, because the rook's guarding that square. Okay, fine. Um, okay, so so bishop there was does work eventually, but it's not the best. Okay, okay, let's have a little think again. If I had a knight, I could drop a pawn here and a knight here in future, but that doesn't quite work. Uh, okay, okay, I know how to do it. Rook takes queen, this is how you do it. You first eliminate the queen, and then you drop the bishop here. Because the idea is if I can get the king up here, which I can do just by doing this, then I can take this and checkmate. Okay, phew. I said so I could also win the queen by just capturing it. Yes, exactly. Um, I was just afraid rook takes, queen, knight takes, and I wasn't seeing how, how it was going to continue. But the point is to take this pawn and to stop the king running away. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry for the slow start. Maybe for those of you who want more, um, some of you won't mind. Okay, so this one I think in the easy one it's just checkmate in two because rook and a knight together form a nice, this is a very nice pattern. The knight and the rook control this whole sort of corner. Um, because the king is blocked off that means it's checkmate. Um, okay, I promise it'll get harder, <laughs> even though even these ones are causing me a little bit of difficulty sometimes. So I, I, I'm thinking queen here, we'd, we'd want to go to their checkmate, but actually knight's covering. So we're going to have to use our other pieces. So pawn, knight, bishop, and queen. So we can go queen here. If the king goes here, we go pawn here, king goes here. And then I'm not sure what to do. Maybe a pawn here, and if knight takes, queen takes, checkmate. So queen here, king here, then what? Maybe again, pawn here. Okay, so this is just easy. It's just uh, the fact is that there's too much control on these two squares. 
Um, so it's not, not a very interesting puzzle. It's just a, we have control of these two squares. Um, OK. OK, so we have just a pawn and a knight. Um, and the king risks running away. But the knight is for, for now keeping the king from running here, so just this square. So I'm thinking that you could do a move like queen here, check, but then the king could run back, and that's a little bit concerning. So instead, we could also go pawn here. Okay, we could go queen here, we could go pawn here. But whatever we do, king, king runs back or king takes the knight. Um, so pawn and a knight in hand, what should we do? So if the king runs back, what's the follow-up? Um, so if we drop a pawn here, for example, king runs back. No, I can't see a follow-up. If, if we wanted to follow it, it would be something like knight here. So what else could we do? We could. Oh. So let's just have a look. Queen here, king here. Oh, queen takes pawn. Yes, yes, yes. Queen takes pawn, and that defends the knight. King here, and queen here, checkmate. So queen here looks powerful because it forces king takes knight. But then, oh, I can't go queen takes pawn because the queen defends. So I've got to be a little bit careful. I mean, so obviously. The, the, white, the white king is safe, so a very long-winded way of winning is just going queen here, king takes knight, uh, bishop takes pawn, cutting off the king from going to g7 and then winning. But we want something a little bit cleaner. Um, okay, how about this? Queen here, if king takes knight, knight here is checkmate. So if I go queen here, black has to block. But then I can go pawn here. Again, if king, yeah, then, then these, this square becomes available. Um, OK, so again, if I look at the forcing sequence, queen here, king takes knight. So it's a very long-winded, yeah, this is not working actually, because there's also king here. Bishop takes pawn, queen could take back. So it will work eventually, but this is not this is not clean. Um, okay, so with pawn and knight, how are we going to finish this? Let's see. Um, okay, I've got another idea. We could go pawn here. No, it doesn't work. So again, this king here is a sort of slight problem. Yeah, okay, how about this? So pawn here, if king here, knight here. The problem is king here. So we're, we're not making the progress we would like. Um, pawn and knight. Okay, so this is giving this one is giving me pause. But what's occurring to me is if, if the queen did stay here, I don't mind if the king takes the knight, because I'd have bishop takes pawn check. Oh, but then this square is still there. Yes, it's not so straightforward. Um, so the best I've come up with so far is a kind of slightly long-winded. If queen here, if king here, then something exchanging the queens, and that should probably work eventually. But if queen here, king takes knight, then maybe knight here, check. 
okay, I'm going to do this, but I don't think this is uh, the best way of doing this at all. Okay, so we can take the queen with check. It's always nice. And we now got a queen in hand. Um, but clearly I didn't get the fastest way of doing that at all, so let's actually look what the solution is. Get a hint, see best move. Pawn here. Okay. And if he takes the knight, okay, we have this variation that I was talking about. Because this square is covered, uh, I can just come in, he can block, and knight here will be a smothered mate. So that's a very simple mate. Um, so if I just go out of here, what if when I drop a pawn here, he goes back. Ah, oh, no, that's very nice. Knight at e6, because the two knights, which are three apart in this way, actually control a whole kind of knight cube, because one, one knight controls uh, these two squares, and the other knight controls these two squares. Um, so king takes knight is actually forced, and now bishop here is a double check, so the king will have to move, but it's checkmate. So yeah, let's just let's show that again. That's a very nice checkmate. So pawn here with the idea that king, if the king goes here, knight goes here, double checkmate. The knight's protected by the bishop, so he can't take it, and the king can't go back because it's cut off by the knight and the pawn. And if the king doesn't drop back but takes the knight, then we have bishop takes pawn, and he can block, and he can block again, but we just take and knight here is a smothered mate. King is cut off. Okay, so that was a slightly tricky one. Uh, so this one's just a mate in two. Ah, so I, I, I remember this one actually. Um, so again, it's like the other one. Two knights, three apart, cut off a whole, a whole knight cube. So what we can do is cut off this knight cube um, and the king can't step back here because this knight's covering the can't step here because the bishop's covering so the king is actually trapped so just re, re knight here checkmate um, okay so we have three pawns a knight a rook and a queen three pawns a knight, a rook, and a queen. Well, the queen's the big one. Uh, and I, I just feel this is going to be just knight here, because you, you want to stop the king kind of running back. Um, and you don't want rook takes knight coming with check at some point. So knight here does feel correct. I just feel it gets the rook off the, off the, the back of the king. Um, And now, doing this, and a kind of easy just luring the king to here, and then checkmate. Oh, sh looks, the queen's covering. What am I doing? Um, <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so um, that doesn't quite work. But, okay, something like here and then we just pick up the queen with oh dear we don't but we will okay um let's have a queen here just to cut off this square and we'll have a, another queen that will that will do okay that was terrible um so obviously there was a nicer way of doing this one three pawns a knight a rook and a queen Okay, I'll, I'll have a look. What's what's the nicer one? Ha! Huh. Oh, this is so nice. You just sacrifice the queen because you put a rook here and it's going to cut off. It's going to defend the rook. And now the king is kind of stranded in, in front of your pawn. So any check, it can't go forward. So any check will mate it. Maybe another knight, for example. His checkmate. Wow. Okay, that's a nice one. Okay.
And so this one, again, we have this two knights idea, two knights and, a, and two queens, but it's not so easy, this one, because uh, the, the f3 and the h3 square look like they're covered. But the e2 square, crucially, is not covered, so maybe there's some, there's some room there. Um, Uh, and then the other thing we have in the position is f f two is under fire. Okay, so what occurs to me in this position is we've only got two knights. So we can't completely waste them with like. Uh, I quite like knight here, check, but that, that will just force the king into the corner. I'm not sure if that's progress or not. The reason I'm not playing it immediately is then we lose the opportunity of going bishop takes pawn if we did that. But one advantage is we could also then go another knight here, and pawn takes knight would be mating because of rook takes rook. So that is forcing knight here, knight here, but he can just take this way. Oh yeah, this is nice. So then I can take back with the knight, and again, he can't go back because queen in the corner would be mace. And he can't take here because all his rook takes rook. And that looks dodgy. So he would probably step up. And then we have knight takes rook. So we're definitely making a lot of progress in this variation. So I'm, feel, I'm feeling confident this is enough to, to get started. And so just to think a second, I don't want to... Do I want to smother him first before I take that? So if I had a third knight, for example, I could smother, takes, and then take here, takes. I mean, if I had another two knights, but again, this is... Or do I want to take immediately here? I think I want to just take immediately here. But let's just have a little think, because queen here is also quite a nice idea. If rook takes knight here, no, but then he could just take with the pawn, and I don't have anything. So I think I want to do this first. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the other variation where he steps up. In fact, let's just look at that quickly now. If he steps up, uh, we have queen here check, which he has to block, otherwise the queen would come to the corner checkmate. So queen here check, he blocks. Knight takes rook check, he comes back. Okay, so it's a bit long-winded, but we're going to, we know we're going to be mating him. Queen takes pawn check. We're going to have a pawn and a rook, and it's obviously going to be mate. Maybe a rook and a pawn, but that's not, yeah, that's not, I'm not seeing the, the okay, so rook takes rook. Um, and obviously I've got rook takes knight check, but where's the mate? Uh... Yeah, because I have another rook to go into the corner. So there we go, checkmate. But just to, I didn't see the full line. If he does, so I need to close this and just to try and. Uh, so if I do this and he does this, uh, I was thinking, let's just have a look. Knight, you, he suggests knight takes f1 immediately. Knight takes f1 immediately. The idea being if the king goes here, queen here is checkmate. And if the king goes here, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Then rook here. And he takes the rook. And queen here is checkmate. Yeah. Okay. So 20. Puzzle number 20. Uh, so it's going to be black to move. Um, so in order when you're assessing a position, it's good to just check, does, does your opponent have mate on you in this position? Because um, if, if there's any threat that they do, you, you know you have to do all checks on the opponent. Uh, so in all, in all the examples we've had so far, they've so far all been all check, 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 and then checkmate. But sometimes in more um, advanced situations, you have to... Um, you might have to do something where it's not 
not directly check, but maybe it traps the king in some way. And in, that, in those situations, you just got to make sure your king, your king is not going to get, uh, is not sort of force mated. Um, okay, so we have a pawn knight, a bishop, and a rook. So we could just drop a pawn here and drop a rook here. Uh, if the king went this way, the rook here, king here, promotes to a queen, and that would be checkmate. So pawn here, king comes up, rook here, king runs. Okay, maybe another idea is pawn here, king comes up, knight here, but then the king could run the other way. But then you could promote. And I thought that was good, but the king can still go like like this, which is a little concerning. Um, but okay, this, this this should be fine. I mean, okay, this isn't the prettiest way, but there's this, and then something called a double check. No, not a double check. Um, I want to call it a take take mate. Oh, ha, it's not mate. Um, but knight here will be mate. Okay, so this is just like a, a long winded. Ah, it's still not mate. <laughs> okay, I need to calculate these better. Uh, queen here. Now it's mate. Okay, so I, I made a hash of that one. Um, so let's see. So pawn here is good. Um, is rook here stronger than the point is? Yes, that's no, not stronger. Okay, let's have a look what else you could do. You could promote to a queen and then go rook on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could promote to a queen and that, that stops the king running away at all. So he has to take the queen. Uh, computer's still thinking if there's a mate. I thought there was a mate, but okay, maybe, maybe there isn't. And I was thinking rook here, if king here, knight here, king here. Oh, the queen is guarding. Okay, so that's not the way. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. I know, so we could also go, no. We could also go bishop here, and that stops the king running this way, but the bishop king could always run this way. That doesn't work, because king can run this way and then take this pawn, which is not nice. Uh, so I thought what I did was quite nice, but let's have a look what the solution is. Uh, the solution is bishop here. Okay, so that forces the king to run to here. Uh, and and now we could go knight here. That forces the king to run even further up. And now we could go rook here. That forces the king to go even further up. Or is there something even stronger? Our rook here, the queen guards these two, so we've got to be careful. Um, yeah, so even better, what about knight here? Because the king can't even approach the knight. And now rook here is checkmate, because the pawn cuts off the light squares and the bishop cuts off the dark squares. And the rook finishes the job. So hi there, Gristiv Yuri. You say you don't understand anything. Um, well, we start. We've been starting with some easier puzzles, and we've been trying to gradually progress to harder ones. And so maybe you've joined us at a tough time, um, and they're getting more difficult. Uh, but we started off with the much easier one. So this is the one we started with. Um, mate in three. We have a pawn, a knight, and a bishop in our hand. We can drop the pieces on the board and to try and find a mate. So it gives you a good 
a good understanding of mating nets to try and have a look at these sorts of puzzles. And it will help you play Crazy House. Uh, and this puzzle, the knight controls those two squares, and the bishop controls the light square. So that was a quite a nice example of a puzzle. And, a, and then a slightly more complex puzzle uh, was uh, this one, where you have a knight, two knights and a queen. And this is a very common pattern. With two knights and a queen, you can often put one knight to open up the king, and then the second knight comes in. But here there was an even nicer way of doing it, which you put the knight on e2, and you draw the king out. And in this case, you don't even need the queen, actually, even a bishop would suffice. Um, so I'm going to post all these links on my blog. Um, and on my and on the YouTube, because this video is going to go on YouTube. Um, so on the blog, that gives you an introduction to Crazy House. And in my, I will post a link to the study. But th th this is a one in a collection of seven studies I just made in the past week or two in Crazy House. So I'll be posting all the links on the blog. So if you bookmark the blog, and also I'll put the links under the uh, when I upload this to YouTube, I'll um, I'll, I'll share the links. Um, so. Uh, but the blog also gives you lots of introduction to how to play Crazy House, so that's why I recommend that. And, and I also would uh, highly recommend the YouTube because uh, there are lots of um, commentary videos on Crazy House World Championship matches, so really high quality matches from the best in the world, uh, as well as lots of fun stuff and hopefully more and more instructive content in future. Uh, and we're, we're, we're now at the stage where this is the first of the studies I was going to have a look at. And we're we're at the we're at the deep end now. Um, things are going to be quite tough from here on out. We've only got five puzzles left in this study, and this is taken from the ten plus ten league organised by Zero Z H E R Zero on Lee Chess, uh, and it's a spin-off from the Lee Chess forty five forty five league. So if you're interested, join that, sign up for the Lee Chess forty five forty five league um, to begin with, and then you'll be able to join us for the Crazy House League. It's an, it's an individual league uh, playing slow games of Crazy House. Um, okay, so we're on um, chapter 21, and we could potentially win a queen. This is really quite a tough one. So I'm thinking take the queen is one idea, and knight at c8 is another idea. But are we a pawn short? I mean, why not knight at c8 first? Where's the king going? King goes. Yeah, not, maybe not knight c8 first, because then the king could go back, and I can't see a square to mate it. But if queen takes queen, king takes queen. If king takes queen, pawn takes queen, then. Ah, this is tricky. So the problem is, I, I, I can go knight at c8 at some point, but then the king can run to d8. So I think I want to get, take the queen first, but then if he takes back knight c8, king d8, what, what's the finish? Oh, okay, I know. Queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, queen here, blocking off the escape route, and then knight at c8. Brilliant. So he can't take with the pawn, he has to take with the king. That's the first thing to notice. The second thing to notice is once the king runs forward, knight at c8 prevents the king from running back. So the king would have to run to here or here. But now we have a queen in hand, so maybe we can do something with that queen. Uh, if the king runs to here, we can definitely do something with the king in terms of taking this pawn. So the king would have to run to here. I think that's it, but it's going to be tricky. Let's just let's just see if we're. It's it's quite difficult in Crazy House to calculate all all the way to the end of a line, so that's why. Um, so this is stopping the king running back. Oh, it's not right. Why is it not right? Um, I was thinking that we could do it like this, but obviously this is not working. And thanks. 
<laughs> shows how dangerous this is. I was thinking we could somehow get a mate like this, but uh, this is not. Um, apparently we don't have enough. The king can run away. Okay, so this is... Um, okay, so let's try again. Queen takes queen. Uh, so the reason he doesn't go pawn takes is because if pawn takes queen at c7, block, and knight at c8 is checkmate. So he has to take with the king. But now for the next move. Knight at c8 wasn't correct. Maybe, yes, maybe to stop the king running we go here. That stops the king from running up. Okay, brilliant. Now, we could go bishop takes pawn, or we could go knight d8. Or we could go pawn takes pawn, but the king could just go back. Hmm. Okay, I know what to do. I want to go... I think I want to go pawn takes pawn. And the idea is, if he just takes the knight, I have bishop here check, king here, queen here check, king here, ha, huh, this, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, So we just got the queen in hand, so what do we do? I want to go pawn takes pawn, so the king can't run back, can't run back. So the king is either going to go here or here or here. So after pawn takes pawn there are two options, it could be knight takes pawn, but that would give us an extra knight in hand, or he could just straight away go king takes knight. If he goes king takes knight, we have a very nice move, which is bishop here. Those, these two squares are both blocked, so he has to run up. And then, I'd have a pawn in hand. So I could put a queen here, and then he runs either here or here. Okay. If he runs here, it's super easy, because we just go pawn here, but he can still run here. Huh, okay, so not so easy. Hmm. Maybe bishop here is a nice idea, but that, unfortunately you can just double take it. So it doesn't quite work. But the, the idea of that was if the king runs here, queen here is checkmate. So bishop here is quite a nice idea. Because it really does, because if king here, so it forces either king takes knight or taking this bishop. But if king takes knight, uh, queen, yeah, but then we don't, we, we need another pawn. Um, oh no, that would work. That would work brilliantly. That would work beautifully. So if king takes knight, queen here, check. Cutting off, cutting off the king, and then the bishop would come the last, go the last step of the way. So bishop here check, he has to take it, but now we have another knight in hand. If he ever steps back, we have queen here. Um, if he ever steps back, we have queen. No, we don't, because the rook could be guarding the back rank. So this is a tough one. Um, even though it's a mate in three, it's, <laughs> it's still getting me. Uh, ah, 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 yes. We can use that idea we had. Pawn takes pawn. Yeah, the whole point is if king takes knight, we have the same idea of queen there blocking off those three squares and then bishop there checkmate. That's why he either had to take the, the, the knight, but then we've got bishop takes knight. Okay, so now we only have mate in two. Queen here. King goes here. And... 
thing is still trying to run. But we could also we could just put a pawn here. If king takes pawn, queen here is checkmate. So he tries to run. He has to run here. Uh, so still we have the problem he's trying to run away. And we have a pawn and a queen. Oh, okay, I got it. Because pawn here, if he tries to run this way, queen here is checkmate. Oh god, I got it wrong. I didn't mean that. I meant the pawn drop. What am I talking about? I I I, I miss I miss mouse slipped because the whole point I was trying to do this. Pawn drop, and the point is that if so I can close this now. Um, Pawn drop, if he goes here, then the plan was queen here is checkmate. Going back to this point, if the king took the knight, lock off the three squares in front of the king, and then the bishops can deliver checkmate. A little bit tricky. If the knight took the pawn, then we get another piece uh, with check, and if he, say, takes this, then actually queen here is checkmate. This is actually a very nice pattern. The knight and the queen together cover a lot of squares because the, the queen covers uh, the light squares and uh, the knight covers the two dark squares. Um, cool, so that was quite a tough one. Okay, I think they're going to get even tougher. Uh, so the last few, 22, 23, 24, 25, uh, are going to be even, I remember this one. <laughs> this is a really nice one. But I'm not going to spoil the, the, the rest of the puzzle for you. Um, so just to show you the Crazy House blog, zhs.blogspot.com. Um, so in this blog, uh, you might recognize this is the one we saw, drop the knight here was the solution, takes promote knight. And this one we saw already. And this one, mate in five. Uh, that was quite a tricky one, with the knight here and the knight here, and somehow opening up the f file. That was a quite a nice one. And this one we saw, which is a little bit tricky, with ending up with the rook controlling the, the, the fourth rank. Uh, and this one is the one we just did, with queen takes queen and, and drawing the queen out. That was also a pretty tricky one. This one I remember, I'm not going to spoil it, it's a mate in 10, but it's kind of very forced what you have to do. So I'm going to, go, I'm going to leave this as a, um, the last few as a puzzle. There's this one, that's a tricky, 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 tricky one. Uh, the third last one is a mate in 15. I don't remember this one. Um, so the, yeah, these are really quite tough now. Uh, the second last one, I think, um, from a game by Seb32 and Yego666 is a mate in seven. And I again, I don't, from white, I kind of don't think I remember it. So yeah, it's an interesting puzzle um, to have a go at. And finally, the what I thought was the hardest puzzle is this mate in 12. And this is very difficult. Um, the idea is the queen is cutting off this king. So the king is actually in some jeopardy and apparently just with knights um, yeah I can, I can kind of see maybe a knight here check is going to force the king to d2 and a knight here check is going to force the king either into the diagonal of the queen or down to c1 but if the king ever goes to c1 queen takes b2 is checkmate so it's going to force it into the diagonal of the queen but then there can be discoveries discover checks Oh, and also there's this rook file which could potentially open up. So you can see how this is huge jeopardy for white. Although I was white in this position and I was very lucky to get away with and uh, and win this game as white because my opponent didn't spot the really, really complex mate that, that there was in that position. Okay, so that's um, an example of a, a practice with computer study. Um, we're going to...
um, what I most of the stuff on my blog is also stuff about the Crazy House World Championship, and um, you, you, and I post lots of uh, videos about that as well. Um, just yesterday, I posted a, a halftime recap. Which I'll just show you. But uh, if you see all the upcoming matches, you can see the calendar. The, uh, there are lots of matches happening this Saturday in the Crazy House World Championship. Uh, to see the matches, you have to go. At, uh, all times are in. Um, well, here it's in London time, so you can set the time to your own time zone. Um, so you can see the current standings in the World Championship, and you can also see some uh, recap posts, which have also lots of puzzles from each of the rounds of the World Championship. Um, and what I've just done just today is I've created some practice against computer studies for each of for the highlights from each of these rounds. Um, and so this is the the results so far, in with uh, Opper Wazen on seven games out, seven wins out of seven, uh, but he still has to catch GSVC who's seven and a half out of nine with one game to go, and twelve teen on seven out of nine with one game to go. So that's the 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 match. That's the the situation in the candidates tournament, and uh, if you go to the blog, you can see um, all the candidates games, all the results of the candidates games, and for every candidates game there was a video. Of the stream of that game, uh, including some streams of Jan Lee and Yasser Serawan. So, for fans of Yasser Serawan out there, I really recommend you check that out and subscribe to Jan Lee. And uh, it'd be cool if you subscribe to me as well. Uh, but there are other people as well. Crosby, Krypton, and the ZH Browse also have some cool videos uh, streaming, as well as Operation himself. Although he has microphone issues, he's also a streamer. And uh, just a couple of recap videos of some of the highlights from the candidates so far. The first one with Operation, but with some microphone issues. Second one without, and uh, some studies of some highlights, and then a, a cool computer study, which I'll just show you now. This practice against computer study. Um, so I'll just open that up now. Um, okay. So the answers to the computer study are in the comments here, the, the full variations. Um, and Antic in the chat says, I'm looking forward to playing in the Templar Stand. So do you know, Antic, that Yego666, who last season helped me catch, so Fishy beat me to love, but Yego666 helped me to catch Fishy on six out of seven because Fishy took one bye and in another game against Yego666, Yego666 took him down, so it was one game all. Uh, and he's done the same again this season, because um, he completely outplayed me <laughs> in both our games, and one of them I was just very lucky to, to come back and win, and the other one <laughs> I got really... And he's 1700 in Crazy House, but when it comes to 10 plus 10, it's, he's, he's dangerous. <laughs> so I'm already not on a full score, uh, whereas Antic... I'm sure is on a full score and will be on a full score. But yeah, yeah, that was tough. I, I was like, I didn't do that much wrong, but I, I was punished. <laughs> but uh, what I realized, I don't know my openings as I don't know my my openings uh, in a kind of theoretical way, and just small inaccuracies seem to be punished. Uh, he really knew what he was doing. Um, so this is a really cool study of highlights from the candidates, and it's a really big study. So the other study we saw just had 25 chapters. This has got 64 chapters, the maximum possible in a Lee Chess study. So we definitely don't have time to, to go through all that, but do check out my YouTube and my blog, guys, so you can keep up to date with everything. So do subscribe to the YouTube and bookmark the blog. Um, so I just want to... So now these these ones are a little bit more tricky. I mean, this one. So I've seen it already. Um, and the key idea here is. So why can't the knight take? Just out of interest. So if the knight takes, I'm trying to see why that's a problem again. We have a pawn, a rook, and a queen. Ah, yes, because then we can dump a rook here, and if the king takes the rook, then we have knight here, and, and the queen is going to be mating on f7. That's why the king is uh, eager 
to get some breathing space. But we can still dump a rook here. Uh, and we really want a knight because a knight is. So we're going to go dump a, a knight here. Is that, is that correct? Because we want. I think we want a knight to be able to really punish. I think this is right. Now we have now we have a knight. If we go pawn here or queen here, that sort of idea, that would be really good. But it doesn't work, and I I, I know that because I've just seen it. What works is really crazy. It's knight here, and the idea of that is you push him into the bishop, and uh, the queen and the bishop together form a kind of one of those boxes again, little cube. Um, and now I could go pawn here, and that would push him. In this direction, and that would be checkmate. Okay, so I, I'd actually seen this puzzle before, and still it's a sort of little bit of a struggle to work it out. Um, but little Plotkin didn't see that mate in the game. Now this is a much easier one. This rook is pinned, so you just drop a rook there. So sacrifice the rook just to be able to get your knight in. Oh, you could also just move the knight and checkmate. Um, okay, so. Should we do some of these? And um, there are quite a lot of them. Um, and they're not all easy. I mean, if I was guessing, I'm thinking it's something to do with f7. And if I'm also guessing, maybe it's valuable having that pawn there. And maybe so it's a drop on f7. And then queen takes pawn. Something like this, maybe. So that's what I'm considering. Um, and other ideas, you don't really want to go all in for the sack because you don't, you haven't got enough pieces for that. But you might also want to go knight here, and then you can come in for the sack. So that's why I'm, I'm in two minds of how to go about this. Um, so I'm thinking pawn f7. If he went this way, we could just use another pawn and. Uh, or we could take the rook. Uh, okay, so the computer is making life a little bit easier for us. Because um, now we could even just... Should we just take the queen? I want to do this, I think. Um, but yeah, this is, oh, the rook's then coming in. I didn't want that. Um, uh, well, I mean, I've got so many pieces. I think I can just go queen takes pawn and go in. I mean, this isn't, <laughs> it's not necessarily the best, but it just, it's, it should be fine. Um, queen here, check. And the point is this, this is dropping. This is not efficient at all, but uh, it should work. Um, let's go rook here. Oh, have I messed up? Um, and let's draw the king out. And I can draw it back in again, but then I need to finish him off. Um, okay, so this is not efficient at all. I could go queen takes pawn as well. That's also looks good. Um, so where's the king going? It's trying to go here. So I can try and block it off. Like so. And then go like here. And that's checkmate. Okay, so this was not efficient at all. Um, so what was... What was the, the more efficient way of doing things. Rook here, is it? Takes, takes, and we'd like to go queen here, but that doesn't work. So what's what's the idea? Oh, we just cleared the back rank. Takes, uh, queen here, is it? And then, I'm supposed to see mate, a mate in one, and I'm like, what? I don't see mating one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This queen comes in. Okay, fine. 
Um, yeah, you have to have full board vision. Okay, but that was interesting. But he could, of course, have just taken. Um, so if I'm just going to close down this. So if I go there, he could just take. Uh, and then the idea was queen takes h2, yeah. Uh, and he could block, but then you've got bishop at g3. So he could block, but then you have bishop at g3. If he ever takes this, we can actually use our existing bishop, and that's checkmate, that's very nice. So he has to drop back to here, but then you've got queen takes rook. King takes, pawn here, and the king is now cut off. And on the back rank, whichever way he goes. If he, if he runs this way, we just go rook here. Checkmate. Um, okay, there are far too many puzzles here to do. Uh, so this has just been a taster, a taster stream of um, of these puzzles against the computer. Um, I, what I'll do is I'll just do one actually really interesting one uh, which I would like to share in particular uh, and it was a game of Master Tan and Master Tan almost found this but just not quite uh, which one was it but I think it's probably my favorite mate so I think it would be a good one to end on. Um, where is it? Where is it? Is it must turning its upper ways? On? I don't think it was. Oh, this was a really nice one though. The idea is uh, upper ways is white and would love to go knight at d6 check and somehow bring the queen in and then the rook's coming in and it's checkmate. But the problem is, after takes takes, there is a, a escape route for the king. So the key move in this position is bishop at d7, because it creates a block for the king. And then you check the king, and now this square is covered, so the king can never run in this direction. Um, and now you can go rook takes pawn and drop a knight here. If he takes, takes back, and this f7 square is weak. Uh, so do you want to go with the queen? You could go with the queen, and with the pawn is checkmate. So the king is forced onto the, the king side where it's not safe. So that was a really nice, really, really nice mate. Um, but where is this master tan mate? Ah, uh, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So I'm going to pause for about 5-10 seconds in case people are watching the video later and want to think about this for themselves. Before showing you this, this lovely little mate. Okay, so nice g6. Is, so you might have ideas of queen at g8, clear the back rank. They, you soon find it doesn't go anywhere. So knight at g6. Okay. Now, in this position, Master Tan played bishop at g8, and the idea is to distract the queen from g5. It doesn't quite work. So we'll see why later. But let's just look at this first. Knight g5. Okay. Now we'll look later what would happen if pawn takes, but let's just assume go with, let's go with the flow. Queen takes, knight takes queen. Okay, so now we have a queen in hand. Okay, and now it feels like we should go queen here. But the problem with going queen here is he can block. Um, Yeah, this is quite subtle. We have two queens in hand. The problem with going um, queen here originally is he can block. 
Um, and in order to get at that king, the rook is covering the back rank. In order to get at the king, we need to move the knight out of the way. So we need to do a move like knight here, check. Um, and then the king could move. And then we want to go something like bishop here. Uh, so if the so king could move, or the rook could take the knight. If the rook took the knight, then bishop here, king takes back, put our second queen on, and it's going to be checkmate. But the problem is, after knight here, check, the king can move and then take the knight, and it's perfectly safe. You could put your second queen on, and it takes the knight, and it runs away. So what's really important is to do this. Check before, um, before so this rook now acts as a blocker for the king's escape. So now you can go queen here, and our queen is bishop here, blocking off the escape route, queen here, and queen here, checkmate. Okay, but just to recap, just a second, so I'll just, I'll just now show on the board what I was trying to explain. If we went queen here directly, um, suddenly black is winning because he can block. Then if you go knight f8, he doesn't have to take it, he can go king g8 and take this king, and this square is not blocked. So this is a really subtle point. Okay, so this is mate if he takes with the queen, but you could say, well, why not take with the pawn? And now in this position, if you now go uh, something like, you don't really have enough ammunition. Uh, if you go something like knight here, check, the king can run. If you go queen here, check, uh, he can block, and again, if he, if he does any check or knight, um, just rook takes knight, uh, white doesn't have enough ammunition. Okay, but there's a very nice move here. So first move is knight here, check, king takes pawn, knight here, check. We saw already if he takes the queen, it's checkmate because you, you've got a, a second queen in hand and that's enough as long as you first block off f, uh, f8. Now, if he takes with the pawn, then you do bishop at g8. And the idea is he can't take with the king because otherwise queen here is checkmate. So, and if he takes with the queen, now the king is blocked off. It can't do the, the escape that we were talking about. Can't even get to g8. So you simply just do this, block, and knight takes pawn as checkmate. So in fact, the king is forced to run up. But if it runs up to here, queen here is checkmate. So king takes this, but we simply have queen here. And the king is kind of blocked off. And queen takes rook as checkmate. So, yeah. Now, unfortunately, what happened in the game is Master Tan played this and then played Bishop of g8 with this very nice idea that we're just going to block off this king. And then he played knight g5. And the problem with this is now the king can take this knight. Um... And now if you go queen h5, the king can run. Whereas in the other variation with here, if the king took the knight in this variation, queen go here, king f6, queen takes f7, there isn't a queen on g8 protecting that rook. So it was a really interesting position in terms of really essential to get the move order right. Well, first pressing the, uh, this check, then this check, and then, in the case of pawn takes, this intermediate move blocking off the king's escape route. Very, very tricky, tricky puzzle. Uh, very, very tricky position that Master Tan found himself against against GSVC, and he, he had the idea of bishop at g8, but he just got the move, which like no mortal <laughs> or no ordinary crazy house player would necessarily even see that move. But Master Tan is one of the best. But he just got the move order just slightly wrong. And of course, unlike chess, Crazy House is played at an incredible pace. I mean, it's uh, three minutes plus two seconds increment. So you've got an average of two seconds per move plus a three minute in the bank. 
Um, so it's not like in chess where you can just sit and think about a position for half an hour if it's an important position. And that does put pressure to, to be able to try and see these mates quickly and and play play accurately un, under pressure. Um, and it's really good training, I think. So I'd encourage you all to, to take up Crazy House. Do check out the blog, which uh, has lots of stuff about how to get better at Crazy House. Uh, hi there, Opa. Nice to see you. Uh, do check out the YouTube where I've got over four days of videos, which you can uh, enjoy. And what else should I say? Also do check out the Discord. So the Discord is the chess variants Discord called The House, where we discuss chess variants. Um, and we have Opera Ways in there. We have Jan Lee, the world champion, pops by occasionally. We have Helmsmite. Um, we have lots of uh, top players, Little Plotkin. Lots of, basically almost all the top players are, uh, hang out there and there's lots of chat, people share puzzles, people share games, they've won. Um, Crazy House is a really brutal game for guys just starting out. Um, playing a, a, against a player better than you, it's, it can be really tough because uh, it's a very fast paced game. It's uh, just one tiny error and the evaluation can swing from plus 10 to minus 10. Um, but it's a, a really great great game, and uh, do do subscribe to Jan Lee Crazy House on YouTube. Do subscribe to to uh, my my YouTube, which I've posted the link of. Um, and uh, yeah, hope to see you again soon. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed these puzzles. And uh, there aren't that many there aren't that many puzzle places where you can do um, there aren't that many puzzle videos for Crazy House. Uh, in fact, this might be the first puzzle video. That exists. Um, but there is a, a nice site also called Chess Variants Training, uh, if you Google that, which has a set of about 3,000 puzzles. Whereas this is something manually created by myself. Uh, I've, I've made about seven studies on this. Uh, if you see here, Serowan student account, I've, um, of they've all, um, all the studies which are practiced against a computer begin with 0, 05 practice and uh, that, and uh, they're taken from positions in the Crazy House World Championship and then the earlier in the Lee Chess 1010 League. And you can have a go, try to mate the computer from these positions. And it'll be really good practice of mating ideas. And in future, I hope to try and uh, to try and make some videos organized according to theme. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a long-term plan. And you'll see actually on the Saran student account, there are lots of studies according to like how to mate with a queen and two knights, how to mate with a knight and a bishop, and so on. Just sort of um, the patterns, because and and also if you want to play bug house, which is on two boards, this is good training for bug house, where you take an opponent piece and you pass it to your partner to play on his board. So hopefully you'll enjoy uh, my streams and uh, see you again all soon. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye guys.